Hello everyone, Robert Rambles here, and welcome back to World of Warcraft Vanilla Classic and the Bloodsail Buccaneers server here on our Hardcore Hunter. We are heading over to the remains of Nomergon today. We have to get 8 and 8, re-stabilization cogs and gyro mechanic gears. That is how we're going to start things out. Hope you guys are doing well. And having a good morning, afternoon, evening, or night. Alright, this seems like a good way to start in on them. Doesn't look like we could be surrounded over here. We could probably afford to be really, really mana conservative here. Between our pet damage and just auto shot, we don't need to spam arcane shot or anything like that. Well, that was a lucky first guy. We got one and one right away. That won't continue to be the case if I remember correctly about the drop rates here. Got some random snow leopards. We're going to go ahead and deal with this guy so he does not cause us any grief later on. As he most certainly will if we leave him up. We need to be careful here because I'm not seeing many other players, so we're not going to have a lot of incidental help or backup. Oh, that's a heal, isn't it? No, it wasn't a heal. It was a disease. Okay, the other good thing about the uh, pet that I kind of didn't think about is they're going to be a disease and poison buffer for us, basically. Any kind of disease or poison is going to go up on the pet, which is going to help us a lot. There are some pretty nasty stat-lowering diseases in vanilla that are very bad for melee, that are very bad for range. So our, our pet will be eating those for us. And that's uh, a positive externality that I didn't really think about till now. I think for now I'll try to stick with one arcane shot per kill. And we'll just kind of see how that goes. I do notice that our pet could be a little bit happier. He's also gaining some levels, which tells me that he might have some TP to spend. Unfortunately, I think... Oh, I have some stringy wolf meat. Maybe he'll like that. I mean, I know he's not going to love it. Okay, there we go. That's growl rank 2. That'll help us hold him hold aggro a lot better. And then we need a couple more TP before we can get greater stamina. Ooh, almost didn't see this guy there. That could have been bad. And then again, these guys are only level 8, so... Not too much challenge here. When you fight these guys at level, they can be quite a pain. Uh, especially on the Hunter. I think I remember being here once on a Hunter, and we didn't have a pet. Really would not want to be doing this without a pet. I really appreciate that we can put Hunter's Mark up at any range. 
so that we can just throw that up while we're running in it. We don't have to wait till we get within our 35 yards to put it up on the enemy. If we had to wait till we were within range, I probably would use it a lot less. It's nice that it's something I can do while we're still running up. I feel like dynamic cam on a hunter might be cool, but dynamic cam has so many like little quirks about it that can cause motion sickness in people I found that uh, it, it almost isn't worth trying to tool with it. If you were doing it for personal use, like I'd say yeah, dynamic cam could be good if you can find settings that are appealing to you. Maybe for a hunter that over the shoulder view could really lend some immersion. But I, I think for like making content though, there's too many weird things that the camera does or can do while zooming and, and reorienting itself that can uh, negatively affect too many folks when they're when they're a viewer when they're not directly engaged with it because I, I think things affect us differently when we look at different parts of the screen I think when we play as opposed to when we view and the parts of the screen we look at are going to determine you know how we feel about the camera's motions so I feel like you could use the same settings and as a viewer your experience would be one way and then as a player it could be a totally different experience Wherein things that cause motion sickness as a viewer, maybe they don't as a player. So I probably won't be revisiting that add-on. Where are we at? We're at 5 and 7, so... Still a little ways to go. Level 11. Let's take a look at our talents. Yeah, I think we just keep going into efficiency, reducing the mana cost of our shots and stings because we're already pretty mana efficient. This is just going to make us more so. And then maybe, well, that's a tough one. We need lethal shots because we have to get down into mortal shots. But improved Hunter's Mark is not bad. It's a flat increase to the attack power bonus of the Hunter's Mark. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, up to 15%. I can math at like a 5th grade level. That's about it. But yeah, I think I think max on that talent would be a 15% increase to the attack power bonus, which feels really powerful, doesn't it? But I don't think we can go that way. Well, maybe we can. Uh, we'll look at what's in the next tier, and maybe the stuff in the next tier will be worthless if we're, if we're lucky. <laughs> Never said that before. I hope the next tier of talents is worthless. So that we can double down on the second tier. Okay, so let's see what's... I know we, we need aim shot, I think. An aim shot that increases range damage by 70. Yeah, we gotta grab that for sure. Uh, what else do we have? Improved arcane shot. It also seems absolutely necessary. Hawkeye. Increase the range of your range weapon? You're telling me that I have to spend... I have to spend like 8 points in this row. Oh boy. There's so many powerful choices in Marksman. Like... Everything is buffing our damage by what feels like a significant amount. Uh, we got ourselves a little surrounded, didn't we? Let's peel off over here a bit. Okay, this should work. I'm really looking forward to getting traps and being able to play with frost traps, ice traps, snake traps, exploding traps. I like the traps, guys. I I'm, I'm really excited to get to that point. We still need one more restabilization cog and then we'll be done. We narrowly avoided pulling that guy, and we got the last item we need, so let's get out of here. I think we could try to go up into the... well, hmm, we can go south, I guess. Frost main hold probably before Shimmer Stout, right? Yeah, let, let's go to the, to the Frost main hold. I believe the enemies there were level 8 to 10, so we should be okay.
we have a lonely copper vein here. We haven't seen any other copper, or I haven't seen any other copper today. Who knows if that's because there wasn't any, or... Uh, no! Okay, we can share, that's right. I'm gonna share this because I, I think that's okay, right? Yeah, I let him get his hit. We've seen this behavior before. Okay, so we got one hit out of it. And, uh, what I'll do is I'll help him kill this guy for the trouble. Somehow we, somehow we had aggro on it anyway, even though he, I think he tagged it first. Oh well, we, we got a little bit of copper out of that. I do like that the nodes can be shared. I, I never thought of that before when they did the quality of life change to make the nodes one hit and you get all of it. And so, but that way, like, whoever gets there first, like, you can, like, just ninja it, you know what I mean? If somebody's clearing to it, you get up to it, you take all five coppers from one hit. Whereas here in vanilla, at least you have a chance they can get in there and they can get one or two hits off of it. If it's a if it's a big one, you can, can split it two and two. I don't really know like what is acceptable in the community, but I, I just I kind of like the idea of sharing it. Okay, he he's gonna take the other one. It looks like that 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 works for me. Oh, see so, you now is he doing this without a pet? Yeah, see, he's doing this at level, at level 9, and uh, without a pet, he's going to have some, some difficulty in here. You can do it, but obviously you're going to kill a lot slower, and uh, you don't have as many ways to get out of trouble. We don't, do we have to, yeah, we do have to explore the whole, it says fully explore, so we're, we're maybe heading back here quite a bit. Now, I have to be careful here, because I'm, I'm starting to get that feeling again, that same insidious feeling that I got with the Warlock as soon as we got the Voidwalker. So, I, I think I need to just make myself move a little bit slower, if that makes sense. Because I'm feeling really strong. And you know what they say about uh, overconfidence. I don't need to repeat it. Somebody, somebody put it in the comments, please. Is that a heal? Uh... It might have been... No, it wasn't a heal. It was Fairy Fire. He, he really should have put that on the pet that time because, uh, you know, he's hitting the pet, but... Nobody said Frost main trolls were smart, okay? I would really like to head towards, ooh, a level 8 warrior. Ooh, be careful in here, man. If we pull this guy, or are we going to pull the other guy with him? Let's, let's pull him back without sending our pet in and see what happens. Okay, we got him by himself. That guy respawned immediately. Which is not the behavior you like to see. That is worrisome behavior. The rest of that will have to wait a second.
What I get worried about in places like this is the path that my pet is going to take to get where I tell him to go. I think the flatter the land that I'm on when I command him, the better off I'll be. So I'm going to be over here. And uh, I'm going to tell him to go... I want to get up here because I think there's a couple of uh, mining nodes. Speaking of mining, uh, we, we really need to skill that up soon. It's it's getting nearly maxed out. We're 60 out of 75. So next time we're back in Karanos, we need to head over to Steel Girls Depot. And I, I think we can look at engineering for patterns and then mining for the next uh, rank of it. I hope he can teach us the next rank. Sometimes you have to go to like the cities for those, I feel like. But I feel like we should be able to get journeymen from him at least. I hope we can. I don't want to cap out. Interestingly, we haven't gotten the ping to fully explore the hold yet. I'm gonna go get this copper mine. I don't know if we need to go around this way in deeper or if maybe we go to the left here. I guess we could go both ways if we have to. It's not too dangerous in here yet. The pet's happy. He's tough, he's resilient, he's holding his own. Inventory space. Inventory space is not not acceptable. <laughs> Inventory space is, is obviously bad. And you guys let me know. I need to be dropping these in the bank, I think. And probably just using the bank a little bit more often than I do. We, we go to Ironforge or cities pretty frequently. And I need to be thinking a bit more. Yeah, we can wear, we can wear intellect stam leather. Like, certainly. A nice little color change. Uh, anything else I want to toss? Just want to make some room so we can loot. Okay. Yeah, we need to get in here. That'd be cool. Is this going to pull the guy up here? It hasn't yet. That was a big one. There we go, fully explore frost main hold has been completed. I would very much like to get up to this other copper node though, so I think we work our way around here to the left. Although this warrior might be going for it because, you know, they're a warrior and blacksmithing pairs well with that. We'll try to see if we can get up here, I see it. Ah, uh, we've got a guy right here. Oh, here's where we... Here's where it gets squiggly. <laughs> We're about to get squiggly. We got a guy behind us who, who surprisingly is not aggroed. I just don't know what my pet's going to do when he's done fighting this guy. He leveled up again. That's nice for him. Okay, and he returned to us. Perfect. We'll, we'll clear this guy, then we'll see if he has enough TP to grab great stamina. He does, so we'll do that. We'll increase his stamina again by three. That's going to give him even more health, so, you know, he can keep taking those beatings. I am pretty sure that uh, he was looking for this copper node. He could have got in here and gotten a hit on it. That would have been absolutely fine with me. Uh, it was four hits. And now we get to fight our way out. We, we could have jumped down on the other side. Uh, the pet is coming. He's coming. He had, to, he had to go around the long way. So if we jump off of something, he's going to go the long way. 
And if we're not prepared for that, or if we mess up and do it on accident, then uh, it's going to get us into trouble. Human paladin here. Higher level than our human paladin ever made it to. We'll do a paladin again one day. Uh, I decided that when I do a paladin, I, I do want it to be a human, so... Figured we put paladin on the back burner for a while. Uh, instant respawn, very nice, very nice. And yeah, the priest and the paladin and uh, whatever else we ran while running the priest really taught me that you have to focus on one hardcore character at a time. You don't have to. It's more beneficial for yourself and the character and everybody if you focus on one hardcore character at a time. I get more immersed in it, and I, I care more about the character when I'm only playing one, it turns out. Interestingly, like, my brain differentiates Wrath now from Vanilla, so I can have a Wrath character going, and I can have a Hardcore character going, and it's like a different game. So that's good at least. Uh, okay, I don't want to go down that way. What's my way out of here? I, c I can go north a little bit. So, everything is done except Shimmerweed. We can maybe do that. We're going to have to head right up into this area here. And I don't know if maybe we have to go around this way. Uh, to get... There should be a, a ramp or a, a series of switchbacks, maybe. We'll, we'll, we'll check it out. I'm not quite 100% sure on how to get to it, but we'll, we'll figure it out. However, uh, we need to vendor. We'll do that at Brunel Village. And we're certainly going to grab these mining nodes. Oh, our inventory is full. Oh no. Oh uh, yeah, Robert, I see I keep... I keep forgetting sometimes that, yeah, you, you have to click it more than once. You have to click it many times. Please do the rewarding, gratifying clicking. Let's sell all what of our junk to you? this fella. Uh, I don't know why my compare is not working. That's fun. Uh, yeah, we don't. Guys, guys, listen. We, I don't know how it happened. But we got to level 11 without wearing a chest piece. We can sell that for like a little bit of silver copper. There we go. We're wearing a chest piece now. We have armor on our chest. I hope everyone's happy. I forget what other character. There was one other character that I went for a long... I think it was a shaman that I went for a very long time without having a chest piece equipped and didn't really think about it or realize it. Uh, chunk of boar meat we can cook. Crag boar ribs we can cook. Can we do some cooking right now? Yeah, we need the Rhapsody Malt for the, uh, that's what's holding- Do you sell Rhapsody Malt? I have the finest wires in the land. You don't. We have to get that from Karanos. Hmm. Keep your feet on the ground. Okay. So in that case, I mean, we really can't do a lot. We can do that. Okay, yeah, I suppose that's about as good as our inventory is going to get for right now. I didn't get on last night to do fishing. I, I didn't have time. It's crazy. So often I, I always tell myself like, oh yes, you'll, you'll have time to do this later. And like, I know that I don't. Because I know what my days are like. You know what I mean? You ever do that to yourself? You, you tell yourself you're certainly going to do this thing and you convince yourself of it every time you say it. You're like, I will have time to get on later and click the button. 
And yeah, I don't, I didn't have time to do it. And so I should have got myself to the inn and, and got that rested experience, but I'll have to keep that in mind. I, I will try not to leave myself out in the world thinking that I'm going to do anything out in the world because I didn't. So I, I'm kind of like wondering how I'm going to level up fishing because... Guys, it's like, I mean, I could probably do some statistics. If I sit here and fish for a while, that's I'm probably going to be able to notice in my stats where the, where the drop-off is for the video. <laughs> as interesting as that is, I know. Uh, we don't have a bauble or anything either, so it's like fishing with nothing. Uh, we bound that to F3. Yeah, it's like, I'd love to get this leveled up. It's hard to work it into videos because I think that it's incredibly tedious. And also, I, I don't have that many things to talk about. I feel like, oh, we put that right in the boat. I can't see it. I feel like I'd have to make like a topic list of things to chat about while we were fishing. We're going to find out if this little guy likes fish. Yeah. I, I hope that he does. He doesn't seem too picky. He, uh, surprisingly, he doesn't like boar meat. Who would have thought, right? Oh, the fish got away. Oh, we're sitting for some reason. Oh, we're, uh, wrong button, Robert. Wrong button. F3, buddy. When you see these F buttons down here, I, I'm not using the buttons on my keyboard for those. I have a Logitech G600 MMO gaming mouse. It has 12 thumb buttons. I can hit 9 of the 12 with my thumb effortlessly. So that's what the F keys are bound to. I'm hitting them on the mouse and not on the keyboard. I can hit them on the keyboard. I can hit 1 and 2 on the keyboard without, without much effort. That's about it. And yeah, the mouse was really a game changer for me for playing MMOs and especially for playing World of Warcraft. Because my fingers can only hit to four until day comfortably. I, I can't, I can stretch for five and six. It was always super uncomfortable. Same thing with like the other keys. Like some people, you know, I have R bound. R is okay to get to. R is okay. Uh, but having the, having the mouse and having access to nine buttons that I can easily hit. Oh man. It changed everything about how comfortable I was playing the game. About how I looked at rotations and, and my key bindings. It, it made a huge difference. If you are playing with an MMO with a standard mouse, if you don't have at least three buttons on your mouse that you can hit with your thumb, you got to get a new mouse. Do it for yourself. Do it for me. Uh, because I just I know what a big difference it was when I switched. It, it's been so long on, on the G600 now, like I can barely remember trying to uh, play. Some, sometimes, sometimes I let my son jump on WoW and... Uh, just run around, fight some stuff in classic, and I'll get on that computer and I'll I'll pick up the mouse that that computer has. I'm like, oh no, it only has two side buttons. It's made a big difference. Uh, I highly recommend it. Not necessarily the G600 itself, although it is an amazing mouse, but just anything with some extra buttons that you can hit and keybind somewhere else on your keyboard. Uh, what are we up to? 11. Yeah, we got a lot done. Uh, we got some raw... I want more of these because I can cook them, right? Yeah, I can cook them, and I don't need any other ingredients. So ideally, we would just be fishing up more of that. I wonder... Now, here's a question. Is, is the pet going to prefer the food when it's raw, or is he going to prefer the food when it's cooked? My instinct tells me that, you know, it's an animal. He's, he's going to want it raw, right? But then again, you know, cooked food is good. But yeah, maybe you guys can answer that question for me. Is like, is it going to be better to, to give it to him when it's cooked or raw? I wish it gave me some like numbers or st or stats for his happiness when we fed him food. Like plus 5 happiness, plus 15 happiness. Uh, just so I could see what's going on. I wonder if there is a way to see those numbers. There's probably some kind of add-on that tracks it. Yeah, I'd be, I'd be interested to know when I fed him how it moves his happiness unhappiness meter specifically and that way i could learn for myself you know what, what is the best food for him we have a copper vein down here Ooh, this is a nice spot because we can jump down and grab this copper vein and we could fish and then after a while the copper vein is probably going to respawn right 
It's a good place to fish and mine. Two things that you don't often uh, associate with each other. I never really noticed before how this log in the middle of the lake here is actually kind of bobbing up and down a little bit and floating a bit on the on the surface of the water. Never noticed it. Pretty interesting. You know what else is interesting? I, I, I checked out the old water facts the other day and uh, that was really interesting. Liquid details. Low. So this is what water used to look, look like in World of Warcraft. Like primarily when I played, it looked like this. Did it look like this till Cataclysm, right? Was it Cataclysm that we got the new water? I'm pretty sure it was. But yeah, this was water. It looked like this and it looked, it was great for what it was, right? I never had a problem with the old water. I, I wonder what it is on, on fair. As soon as we go to fair, we get the new water. It's, it doesn't look great, but but it is the new water. Whereas this this is the low res water. It's like it's not like it's the thing is, it's not that one is better than the other. It's that they're totally different. You know what I mean? It's that they're completely and utterly different. Okay, enough playing with the water settings, Robert. You're supposed to, I wish we can fish and be in the settings at the same time. That's the dream, right? A fishing stream would probably be okay. That'd be a way to do some fishing. It'd be like the least popular stream on the internet. But it would be a way to justify getting it done and we could have a chat caveat to that is that I probably won't have a cam on. I spent a lot of time in front of classrooms and a lot of time virtually in front of my webcam and not really a big fan. I don't feel like anyone needs to stare at me while I am making my brain tell my mouth to make the words. Sometimes it's a struggle and I don't think anybody needs to see that. We all have our insecurities. And I don't have my office set up for it. I don't have my background set up for it. I don't even have my camera connected. I have an okay Logitech camera somewhere. But yeah, I would, I would do a stream without my camera. And we could at least have a chat. And then even if I had my camera set up, I mean, I'd probably turn it on for a little bit. And turn it off eventually. Your fish got away. Hmm. All right, we got the 25. That's that's a pretty that's a pretty good milestone, I think. We we've got lots of fish and what we can do here is let's try to feed him one of the raw ones. You know what? Let's not do that. 
Let's go back to camp. We'll cook them up. And then we'll feed him one of the cooked ones, because why not? I, I, I want the, uh, I want the cooking skill-ups. I don't want to waste a single cooking skill-up, okay? So, let's do it right. Uh, we could probably sell this. We're, we're not going to be picking up tailoring anytime soon. What would be really cool... Uh, here's like my just my pie-in-the-sky classic ideas for today. And when I'm talking about, like, random ideas, I I'm not complaining about the game in its current state. I just like to theorize on, on possibilities, you know? It's like, it's like the Marvel What If series. It's like World of Warcraft classic What If. Think about it that way when I talk about these things. Uh, it'd be really cool if we, like, you know, we keep everything the same. You know, the same everything. But we add some stuff in, like, you know, for, uh, for immersion. Add some things for immersion. I thought when we came back to Brunel Village... I was like, how cool would it be if, like, as you do quests for them, they actually start to set up, like, more permanent structures, and then by the end of it, it becomes a little village, and it would serve no other purpose except to put some immersion into the world. And I think if you're going to do anything with Classic, if you're going to do anything with Classic, like, just put some more immersion into the world. Keep building out that immersion and, and see what kind of game that ends up being. Uh, also, so we go to cook, right? We have to go to the fire, we have to be at a cooking fire, it's part of the mechanics. It'd be cool if we folded out like a little griddle top, a little stove appeared, and uh, and it actually set to cooking, you know what I mean? Like it looked like we were cooking something. Just little flavor stuff like that, stuff that's like mostly art assets that can be dropped in with some phasing, you know what I mean? Like work in that phasing technology for changing the villages and buildings. And then as the quest lines play out, you don't have to really add any more quests. Keep the, uh, keep the quest the same, but then as we progress through certain quests, have phasing change a little bits of the world, little bits of the villages and towns. And it would take art assets and it would probably take, you know, obviously the coding to get those triggers in to tell the areas to change for the player and it keep you in. I guess the problem people have with that is that then you have people existing in different phases, right? But man, wouldn't it be so cool? <laughs> Wouldn't it be so cool to have some phasing, just for like the immersion of it? It, it must be so hard to implement stuff like that into an MMO. The idea of like a village or a town scaling up and changing over time. Because you have to handle it one of two ways. It either has, if it's going to be triggered by quest progress at a character level, it has to be instanced. So that only people on those chains are seeing the changes, right? Uh, or you have handle it at the world level, and then you have other systems of progression that push the change forward. But then sometimes that can leave players behind in, in like a weird way where maybe you miss entire transitions. But it would be cool to see something like that make its way into this game. And for them, if they ever pick up any kind of development to, instead of trying to push it forward, improve it laterally you know what i mean like we're not trying to push forward to anything we got we did all the expansions go back to the base game and instead of pushing it forward fill it out fill it out you know I'm sure it must be really hard to be a, ga a game dev and to work in the game dev industry. I can't imagine working in game dev and like having all kinds of ideas that I thought were amazing and, and knowing that most of them were never going to see the light of day. Knowing that ultimately a lot of things are based on like perceived profits and you know, is there value, is there enough perceived profit in making this change? Everything is analyzed. 
numerically for the money value that it could potentially bring in the future. And that must be frustrating for people who are just artists. Uh, this looks really sketchy. Like, okay, maybe I can take this guy. I want to pull him back. I'm not sending my pet in yet. I'm going to pull him way back. Because I don't like the look of that little area. That looks like where you go to die. There we go. Yeah, especially with casters, we need to be careful. Uh, there's some there's some ore here. Really close by. Let's try to tag this guy. Yeah, that got him. Is this going to be line of sight? That's the question. It is line of sight. I mean, I don't have any good feelings about anything in this area. I can't. I don't even think I can loot this guy safely. Okay, I have a guy back here. Okay, here's one basket. That's good. We need six, so five more. I, th I feel like some of the guys have a small chance to drop the item. I believe it's the seers that have a chance to drop the item. I'm not... Okay, I do see one right here. I want the copper node, so I am going to fight our way over here. Okay, there we go. Yeah, he dropped it. That was a seer, so we're three out of six. There's so many baskets here. If we could clear this, we'd be all set, but I, I don't want to try to clear that. That seems like it would be foolish, and it seems like it would probably lead to some trouble. If not an outright death. Okay, we got a guy up here I didn't quite see. Our pet is getting sadder and sadder by the minute. We gotta feed this fella before he takes off on us. Yeah, we never fed him after we after we cooked the food. Uh, hey, do you want to eat some of this? Oh, we didn't we didn't put our melee weapons back on either. We do need to take care of that. Not that it matters very much because they don't have stats on them. Let's feed him a little bit and we'll see if he if he goes green. We'll give him a little bit of time, and what we'll do is we'll re-equip our weapons. We don't need to have the fishing pole on, you know? Instead, we'll actually equip a fish. A little bit different.
So circling around the back way here was actually really good and this may be the easiest time I've had of completing this quest ever. So I, I'm glad we found that little loop around, that was really cool. I'm glad we can curve our bullets. It's a good skill to have. Speaking of bending bullets, still working my way through the second set of Mistborn books. I'm, I'm approaching like two thirds of the way through the second book. I have already had my hands on the hardcover of the third book. And yeah, man, I, I need someone to talk to about the Cosmere. I need to start a, a little book club in the Discord for those of you who have read or are reading uh, the books of the Cosmere, the Mistborn books, or the Stormlight Archive. Because, man, uh, it, it, the world building that he puts into his work, the way that everything is obviously thought out years ahead of time, like, he knows where things are going, he knows how they connect, he's, he's gonna bring it all together. Uh, and every time he does, it's amazing. The way things carry forward uh, in the universe over time, it basically puts all other world building to shame. It's been really hard for me to care about the building of other fantasy worlds uh, after really getting more engaged in the Cosmere. Yeah, it's it's been interesting. So yeah, I'm curious to talk to anybody about the books, just to chat about them, you know. Currently working my way through the Lost Metal. Is it the Lost Metal? I, I always get the name of the second book wrong. Alloy of Law. Insert second book, and then Bands of Mourning. <laughs> I don't ever look at the covers because I take the dust jackets off. So I'm picking up the hardcover every time I pick it up. I can probably just blast this guy without sending my pet in, I realize. Let's see if that actually works. It did work. And he didn't aggro. I I'm kind of thinking about this chest. But we have two seers here. And a snow strider. But I'm like, what's in the chest? Could be valuable. Let's not fight for the chest. Let's get out of here. And I'll stop running my mouth about books. But I am curious uh, to know how many of you guys read Sanderson. And how have you felt about other book series or fantasy shows? And how have you felt about other things after Sanderson. It's hard to compare storytelling in novels to storytelling in other forms of media because I feel like other forms of media are very controlled and limited in the kinds of stories they can tell. When you're setting out to write an epic fantasy series, that's what you're doing. You're setting out to write your epic fantasy series. You get to plan the thing, execute on it. You you control how long it is to some degree. Like granted, you're gonna have an editor and editors can take a pretty free hand in things sometimes, depending on your publisher and other stuff. But the point is like you're, you're you know what I mean? Like TV shows get canceled, right? Movie series get canceled. They just die, you know? Uh, so when you're a writer for those types of media, you, you can't really plan anything that's too long term. You're kind of writing season to season. And if we're lucky, you get something where like the writers are good enough to weave in old plot threads and plan a little bit ahead. But they can never plan too much because they have to have a story that makes sense standing alone as a season without it ever maybe being continued because it might not be continued. But so they have to strive to tell these more short form stories that allude to greater things. And a lot of times that they they never finish, they never come to fruition, Can I help you? or they just don't have the payoff that like a big fantasy book series would have. So I feel like it's almost not even fair to compare you have a great like day, novels though. to other forms of storytelling. But even just thinking about other fantasy book series that I've read in my life, Wheel of Time, um, Odessa's Order Chaos books. I read a lot of Terry Goodkind's uh, sort of truth books. Not like the last eight that he wrote, but like the like the original five or six. 
Uh, Terry Brooks, Sword of Shannara books. I, I've read like about a dozen of those. I know there, there's many that I haven't read. But yeah, when I think about these other book series, I'm kind of, uh, I'm not as interested these days. Uh, so we need to turn in Frost. So Perfect Stout, ooh, did Perfect Stout go back to Brunel? Oh, I think I made a mistake. One of these goes here, but I think the Perfect Stout might not. That might have been a Brunel Village quest. I think we'll probably be heading back out that way, maybe? If not, I'll just go run and turn it in, but we'll see. We'll see what else we have to do here. You got my attention. I didn't think you'd have much trouble finding the place. My directions are excellent, you know. He brings out some paper and scribbles on it momentarily. There. Now this certainly is funny. I don't suppose that you would mind doing one last favor for me. Uh, okay. Take my report to Senator Baron Redstone. He's a sour type, so don't let his less than sunny disposition get to you. He's in Ironforge in the chamber where King Magni holds court. Watch your back. So that'll send us to Ironforge. Still Girls Depot needs to get turned in. What's on your mind? See you soon. Oh, this is not counting as a weapon, is it? We're not dual wielding this as a weapon. This obviously doesn't have stats. Okay, sure. We're just holding it um, for show. Makes sense. Uh, we want to visit the mining trainer here to see if we can get the next rank of that and maybe learn some stuff from the engineering trainer as well. Let's have a look. Uh, this is a bedroom. I thought that... The, why did I think there were trainers over here? Oh, maybe they're in the next building, Robert. Yeah, maybe they're over here. Engineering supplies. Great to meet you. Do we need engineering supplies? Well, I don't think so. Safe travels. We should probably make the rest of our of our blasting powder. And just to see what, what skill ups we can get from that while it's still green. If I go ahead and I make the other stuff, this is going to go gray pretty quickly. But right now we have a small chance of getting skill ups out of it. So let's make these 15 and cross our fingers. What it, what it kind of made me realize while I'm reading the Cosmere and having all these feelings about how good the story is and how like other forms of media often struggle to tell coherent stories over long periods of time. I think about World of Warcraft storytelling, uh, not in early days, but just in later expansions, how they try to tell these big cinematic arcs, but it always felt like they never took the time to, to build it up or, and there was never a long-term payoff. And I kind of realized that like, I don't, wa I don't really want that out of my fantasy games anymore, that, that, that high octane trying to do this big story with these big moments. I, I much prefer what we're doing right now. Just with our boots on the ground, doing small things for small people in small corners of the world. Making a difference where we can. Uh, occasionally coming up against something a little bit bigger than ourselves, but without too much, like, narrative. Because I feel like narrative can... Too much narrative that's not awesome can definitely hurt a game. Uh, see current WoW storytelling where like they're doing a lot more content but I'm just not interested in the story anymore uh we needed to find the trainers and I just got, keep getting distracted yeah I need to talk less and play more probably let's talk to you what can I do for you? Yeah. okay 
Uh, you can't teach us anything. Which, so we've learned everything we can, or let's let's check available. Oh, here we go. Okay. I'm just trying to see, like, when are we going to make a thing that matters at, at 50? I, I'd like to be able to do that, and I feel like we probably can get there. Requires, that's right, requires a blacksmith's hammer. See you soon. We can maybe get one of those nearby? That's right, that's why we couldn't level this up. Um, engineering supplies. What can I get for you today? You do have a hammer. Okay, we can sell some stuff to you also. Okay. Off with you. Requires anvil. Uh, so you're a journeyman engineer, but you don't have anywhere that you can do engineering near you. That's that's fine, I guess. It's it would be hard, I guess, to be an engineer and practice that craft without uh, without an anvil, buddy. Maybe you should invest in one of those. In the meantime, I guess we'll come over here and use the anvil back in town. I'm curious uh, to how you guys feel about the profession stuff and seeing more of it in the videos like this. Because I feel like this is one of the ways that I'm going to be able to level these up, is if I can if I can do them in the videos, kind of whenever it seems convenient. I, I used to think about maybe keeping all of the crafting stuff at the end of videos, but sometimes that doesn't really make sense. Sometimes it's, it feels good to kind of have a break uh, between quests to do stuff like this, you know? So it doesn't all feel like go, go, go. Which, it, it sometimes can feel that way if we're not stopping and uh, doing some crafting. Let's make some of these. We, let's get the 50 and then we'll learn the... Uh, then we gotta run over and we gotta learn the, uh, the weapon. Then we probably have to run back to craft it. I, I kinda wish... You know, we probably could have done this in Iron Forge and it, it would have been a lot more convenient. Although maybe not because the, uh, the engineering trainers were not in the Central Forge area. So, my question is like, should I just make a bunch of this for the skill ups? I probably should. I should probably make handful of copper bolts until it's green. And then we'll run over to the engineering trainer and see what else they have for us. We have plenty of copper. If we need more copper bars, like, we can smelt some here too because we have tons of copper. I don't even know if we're going to need all this copper to skill up engineering. But we might. It's green, but we have so much extra copper and that we can make so many more bars that I say we run this out a little bit. We can run this out a bit for skill ups and then we can, uh, oh, we could even, we could do some ammo too. Let's do some ammo. I think that's one, two, three, four, five. We can do probably one more. Okay. Let's go back to the engineering trainer and let's make the gun. At 60, we can make a crude scope. Attaches a permanent scope to the bow or gun, increasing its damage by one. I did not know about scopes. Scopes? Coarse dynamite is the next stage of dynamite. That's awesome. And crafted heavy shot. 
See you soon. Okay, so what do we need to make the rifle? We need a copper tube and a wooden stock. Copper tube, we need weak flux. Okay. What is wooden stock? That is the next question. Is it something we need to buy? It is something we need to buy. It is not cheap. That is that is true. And then to make the copper tube, we need weak flux. Okay. Let's do... Requires the anvil. Okay, so that'll give us the copper tube. We've got the wood stock. Okay, so we should be good with this. Safe travels. It is annoying to have to run back and forth. From now on, we will try to find somewhere in the cities we can do this stuff. Uh, there, there's got to be an engineer trainer somewhere near an anvil. It's going to be a pretty big damage upgrade. We're going from 4 to 9 damage to 6 to 13. And from 3 DPS to 4.1 DPS. Here we go. Our first weapon upgrade as an engineer. The first weapon I've ever crafted as an engineer. That is very exciting. My very own handcrafted boomstick. Look at that. Okay. That's that's really exciting actually. Arc light spanners, I, I like I'm assuming we're going to need these eventually. Let's make one of them for now. They they are rather expensive to uh Oh, is this a weapon? Oh, it's a weapon. We don't we don't need that. But we can make main hand weapons. This doesn't say what it is. It's not a mace or dagger or axe, it is a spanner. And it is specific to engineers. 5 to 8, 2.7. It's, it's not better than what we have, so. Very interesting, though. Hmm. Alright, so we can make bombs to, to level up, which takes a lot of resources. There's really not a lot else we can do. We also need to learn first aid, so I don't want to do too much of this. I'm going to get it to 60 and stop. And then I'm going to get us over to the inn, and we're going to get first aid, and we should probably scale that up a bit too. Now granted, we're probably not going to often get hit, right? John Longbeard the Hunter, dead at level 7 in Dunmoro. Just roll again, go again right away, do a little bit of zone hopping, and then get your pet. Uh, let's see. Speaking of that, are we level... We're not level 12, so nothing new to train. No. Uh, we don't want to set our hearthstone here. Do we need to sell... I think we can sell some of this food. I don't think we need all of it. The Rhapsody malts, like... I could buy some of these and we can make... How many boar ribs do we have? Ten? That that broke us. Okay, that's cool. Be good. How are you? All right. Okay. Pick so let's go ground. cook up that. I know it was a lot of money, guys, but I I really want the skill ups. We can. It's buff food too, so it's not very strong food, but it can give us a little bit of stamina and spirit. And if we can get sizable stacks, I, I can make a better effort to make sure we keep that buff going when we're fighting stuff. But primarily here, I just really want to get cooking leveled up. And uh, I think, I think, but I think what I might do is, uh, we gotta do some more fishing, right? We gotta use this while it's yellow. So now that we're at 50, I'll, I'll see if we can learn anything new. 
What's on your mind? We can. We can get journey. Oh, we're broke. <laughs> Boiled clams and coyote steaks. Okay, we're gonna hold off on these. Um, I would like to get journeyman, but it's five, five silvers, and we are we are quite broke. Watch your back. Uh, it's gonna be so we're gonna have to do some farming, you know, we'll do some farming for meat, we'll, we'll do just some extra killing for the, our pet's experience. We're gonna get a different pet eventually, we're gonna probably stable this pet in Elwyn. I think Goldshire has a stable master, and then we'll, we'll catch something else, we'll, we'll catch a wolf or something, you know. And we'll learn some skills from him, we'll level him up. And then we'll probably dismiss it and we'll pull this guy back out. Um, but yeah, and that'll be an opportunity for us to run around and just do some fighting. And hopefully loot a bunch of stuff to sell. And make tons of money. Question mark, question mark, question mark, profit. It'll be fine. <laughs> so yeah. Let me know what you guys think. I would love to hear from you. And until next time, take care of yourselves out there in the real world. And take care of each other. And we'll see you back here again very soon. Bye for now.